Um, I nearly missed it today. I was, uh, I think the clock in my kitchen is wrong. Welcome to the um, exercise class of the 12th of August. Um, I should just say, if you, if you want an exercise class and you don't want this five minute preamble at the beginning, just scroll along and, and miss out all my words of wisdom. It's your choice. Uh, I'm just going to adjust this slightly. That's a bit better. Uh, right. Um, today, the talk is about you for underwear. I couldn't think what you could stand for. I was I was uh, racking my brains and uh, I thought, well, I get asked a lot about, it's not really underwear, it's running bras. I get asked a lot about exercise or sports bras. And um, there, there are so many on the market, really loads and loads on the market. Uh, hang on a minute. I'm just going to go and get the chair from the kitchen. And I've just noticed that my kitchen clock is slow. So, whew, good job we're here. Uh, yes, so, uh, running bras. Um, now, I'm not making a penny off this. I'm not sponsored or anything. But for, it took me forever because I run. I've been running since 1984. And um, a lot of then running was not, there, there weren't the sort of plethora of sports bras that there were. And it took me ages and ages and ages to find one that um, worked, basically. Most of them offering great support and all the rest of it. Well, they didn't support me. Uh, without being too technical, um, until I saw, I think it was on, I saw it on Oprah Winfrey, uh, the Enel. It's spelled E-N-E-L-L. -L. I'm going to show you one. Um, it's got no, it's got no elastic. Well, it has. It's got elastic in the bit that goes around your your ribs. But it's it fastens at the front. It looks like that. It's like it's proper chest harness, isn't it? Um, and you can only get them online. Um, I'll put um, I'll put a, a, a link up afterwards um, where you can you can get them. They're not cheap, but they last for years and years and years. If you are um, for the hit bit at the end, the heart bit beat bit at the end, this is really really good. It's not sized like a normal bra. So when you go on the website and you get onto the um, the bra size, if you want to buy it. Um, follow the instructions for fitting very carefully and also you'll think this is far too small but what you have to do I'm just going to show you now I never thought I thought I'd be doing this but anyway uh, you put it on but you have to you have to really squidge I've got one on underneath you need to really squidge yourself into it um, and it really just flattens the whole thing um, and I, I just can't recommend them too highly. I never, ever wear any other sports bra. But, I mean, if you want, then choose one that gives good support. That well, See, I don't like elastic straps unless you've got, unless you're a sort of size A cup or something. I don't think elastic straps are any good at all. I like this because once you're in it, nothing moves. Um, I mean, I've run, I've run marathons in it done half marathons and they are just fantastic um i don't know what else to say about running bras if you have any questions about running bras feel free to ask me i'm just going to put this back so the dog doesn't get it the dog is asleep this morning i'm just going to have a slurp of tea see i thought i had plenty of time made myself a tea but because the clock in the kitchen is 10 minutes slow I got caught out a bit because I take the dog out for a walk first. Right. Um, might as well get started. I, well, we've got a few more minutes, a few more seconds um, before I have to go into the preamble. I'll adjust the screen, I think, because you can't see. And look. I'm wearing shoes today so that you can see the contrast on my feet because I think sometimes it's a bit difficult. Just let me see. 
That's about right. It might be a little bit high, but it's about right, I think. Um, right, so it's nine o'clock. Um, just in case we've got anybody new, and I hope we might have somebody new. Are you there, Alison? Hope you are. Uh, <coughs> the class is in three sections. There's the warm up, the main section, and then there's stretching at the end. And I tell you when each section is. Um, so uh, what else? The, the, the equipment you need, you need a kitchen chair or a dining room chair, a chair without arms. You need an exercise band like this. If you haven't got one, you can still do the uh, movements without the band, but it's more effective if you have an exercise band. The exercises are functional fitness exercises. So they uh, help you to be, they help you with your everyday activities. So when we do a squat, that's for strengthening your legs and your glutes. Glutes are your bum muscles so that you can get up and down stairs, in and out the bath, so that you can walk. Um, arm exercises are so that you can use your arms. Quite a lot of people have reduced mobility in their shoulders and that hampers what you can do. You can't wash your hair, can't style it at the back. <coughs> can't reach up to high cupboards. <coughs> so the exercises I do are to strengthen you um, and make everyday living easier. So we are going to start with the warm up and we're going to start just walking on the spot. So I'm going back here so that you can see my feet. I'm going to put it down just slightly. That's a bit too much. It only needs a tiny, tiny adjustment. One day I'll have a proper, proper studio where with proper cameras. That would be nice. Right, so you're just walking on the spot very gently. Slightly exaggerated swing of your arms to get your shoulders mobilised. Do it on your toes if you can. See, I've got my shoes on so you can see the contrast now. You don't need to lift your legs very high at all. It's just, just coming off the ground because we're just at the beginning of the warm-up. Although we don't need much warm up today, it's, it's quite warm here in Manchester. So just uh, make sure your shoulders are moving as well. This bit always makes me feel a bit like Peter Kay when he's doing the Is this the way to Amarillo? Ooh, I wonder if I broke copyright by singing that. Maybe I did. Right. We'll stop that for a second and then put your hands. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to have to adjust this back up again. Put your hands on your shoulders. It's even worse, isn't it? Did I mean to go up or down? So put your hands on your shoulders and we're just going to stretch up nice and high. See if you can get your arms by your ears. If you can only get them there, that's absolutely fine. Remember, the rule of these exercise classes is do everything at your level. Don't try and force anything. If you can't get your arms up here, just by that movement, you will eventually loosen them. So up to there, down to there. Push the air away. Bring the arms back in. Push the air out in front of you. Bring the arms back in. Let's do that by and do little steps at the same time. So up. And then down there, push out and in and forward and back. And one more time, up, down, out to the side, back in, forward and back. Right, now still concentrating on the mobility in the shoulders. Put your hand on your shoulder so that your arm is like a wing. Have it sticking out at 180 degrees from your body so as it's like that. Just have a look and check that it's there. I can see because I've got the monitor in front of me. And imagine you've got a pencil sticking out the end of your elbow. And we're going to do five big circles, draw five big circles backwards and five forwards. So a nice full range of movement. One, two, only your arm moves. Three, four, five, and then forwards. One, two, three, four five and then the other one same again i'll do it this way this time one two nice range of movement three four 
five, and then back forward, in fact, two, three. Do you spot the deliberate mistake? Four, five. And then the last one for our shoulders, excuse me, I've got an itchy shin. The last one for the shoulders, and I, you, those of you that are with me all the time, I really like this one. Um, it's the one where as one arm comes up, the other arm goes back. And it's only your arms that move. Don't rock your body. And just do your arms as far as is comfortable. Again, if you can't get your arm up to there, just take it as far as is comfortable. And the same with going back. We're going to do 10. So do that. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic. Right, we're going to go into our little routine. So we're going to start just by doing a heel dig. You can see now my heel is just going into the floor, my toe is pulled back. And at the same time as we do that, keep doing that, anchor your elbow by your waist. And as your leg goes out, the opposite arm is going to do a bicep curl. So we're going like that. Opposite arm and leg. Just check that you are doing opposite arm and leg. This is good for your coordination, which helps balance. And apparently your brain. We do three two, one. Good. And then the next one we're going to do is we're just putting, just stepping out to the side. You don't need to do a big step, just a little one. And at the same time, have prayer hands and you're going to push your arms out to the side, push the air away from you. These exercises are good because they're warming you up. But they're also improving your balance because temporarily you're on one leg. They're improve, improving your strength because when you do that, bending this knee, you're doing a sort of mini squat. And they're improving your coordination because you have to think what you're doing. So three, two, one. Fabulous. Next one we're going to do, just step back. And at the same time as you're stepping back, have your hands at chest height. Just going to put your hands out. Splay your hands. Jazz hands. Give your, give your hands a bit of a workout. Again, this one you're balancing. You're using your muscles and coordination. Three, two, one. Fabulous. Last one. Just tap your toe. Just tapping your toe like that. And at the same time, you're going to swing the opposite arm. So, just a bit like Fred Astaire. Or maybe I should say Ginger Rogers. Three, two, one. Now we're going to put all that together because um, towards the end of the main bit of the exercise, we, we put it together, have a sort of little routine, which is good for your good for your brain and your coordination and your balance. So we're going to start off nice and slowly. We're going to do heel digs, side, back, toe tap, heel dig. Side, back, toe tap. One more time. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Well done. Right, it's 10 past now. I feel warmed up. I don't know about the rest of you. I feel sort of sweated up. 
Uh, so we're going to go on to the main body of the exercise now. And as, as usual, I start with a squat, the dreaded squat. Um, squats are really good for you. That's why I do them. It's because I love you all and I want you to be as fit and uh, uh, as adept at daily living as you can be. So a squat is sitting down without the chair. So you start with your feet. The, if you can't manage this, I'm going to show you how to adapt it um, down a bit in the chair. But maybe I should do the chair one first. No, I'll do this one first. Feet slightly wider than hip width apart. I'm going to turn sideways now so that you can see. And the squat is not doing that. A lot of people think that's the squat. That puts a lot of strain on your knees. The squat is sitting down, so your, your bum goes right out. And you can go down to there or right down if you want. But your knees, the balance is on your heels. That's why I keep falling backwards. Your knees don't go over your, over your toes. So it's like that. And if you can, remember, imagine you've got an eye in the middle of your chest. So that has to keep looking forward. If you can't manage a free squat, start off in the chair, knees at 90 degrees, ankles under your knees, hands like this so that you're not tempted to use them, and stand up, and then sit down again. If you notice sitting down, you can't sit down like that. You have to st you stick your bottom out when you're sitting down. If you can't do that, use your arms for momentum, and back down again, and if that's impossible, put your hands on your knees and stand up. Okay? Try in everyday life, get into the habit of standing up without using your hands. Just stand up using your legs, using your muscles, using your thighs and your, your bum muscles. Uh, and it will keep them strong. Squats are not just for... Um, the Wednesday mornings, all the exercises you can practice in your daily life. So if you've got to reach a high cupboard, reach with both hands. Um, waiting for the kettle to boil, do a few squats. Got to pick something up from the floor, pick it up doing a squat. Anyway, I'm sure you can think of lots of ways to do it. So we're going to do... Now, remember, if you can only get down that far, that's fine. It's the technique that I'm interested in. If your knees are hurting, use the chair. So we're going to do 10. But you, I put my hands out in front to balance me. You can put them anywhere. So go down. As you come up, just tap your hands behind your back. Two. Three. I'm going to turn sideways. Four. If you can't do 10, five, that's absolutely fine. Six, I know some of you do squats while I'm explaining how to do them. Seven, eight, hardcore, nine, 10. How was that? Good, okay. Right, the next one we need the chair and the band. I'm going to put the chair back here so you can see what I'm doing. So you're sitting on the edge of your chair. Ah, because this is so exciting, isn't it? You're on the edge of your chair. Feet out in front, legs straight. With your toe pulled back like that. You're going to take the band and you're going to wrap it round. Try and get it in the instep so that it's secure. and doesn't ping back and hit you in the face. So you're sitting up nice and straight with quite a bit of tension on the band. Don't have the band at the end. If you can't, uh, if you can't bend forward, walk your hands down the band a bit, so that there's a bit of tension. I'm gonna show you how to do the arms. I'm gonna move this a bit. So, your feet stay on the floor at all times. Your toes are pulled back at all times, just to hold the band. You're sitting up nice and straight. You've got quite a bit of tension on the band, and you pull back. You don't go out or up. Your thighs, your, sorry, your hands, it's as if you're holding a dog lead. Just go parallel to your thighs or skim your thighs. Your, arm, your elbows just go back. Imagine you've got a pound coin between your shoulder blades and you want to keep it there. Only your arms move. So we're going to do 10. So 
One, nice and slow and controlled. Two, as you get stronger, you can use stronger band or you can um, tighten the tension. Three, make sure the band doesn't ping. Four, or break. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well done. Staying in the chair. You don't need to move back. You're still on the edge of your seat. Put the band under your knees and then cross it over like that. Hold it, each hand at one, each side of your knee, and you hold it there. You don't let the band slip through your fingers. Your knees are together. Then you just open them so that your thighs are parallel. You can move your feet so that your thighs are parallel. And that's your starting position. In this position, you're having to actually concentrate against the band or, or, or put pressure against the band to keep your thighs parallel. And then we're just going to leaving your feet in that position. We're going to open the thigh. You have, you have open your legs, basically. There's no dignity in, in exercise. And then bring them back to the starting position so that they're parallel. That's one. We're going to do ten. Slow and controlled at all times. Two. You should feel it. I'll show you in a minute. Three. You should be starting to feel it here. Four. Nice and slow and controlled. Five. I can certainly feel this now. Again, you can control the tension. Six. Seven. If you're feeling particularly strong, really tighten the band. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Right. How was that? I quite like that exercise, but I can feel it there. These muscles here keep your legs straight. So one thing I should have said when we're doing the squat is sometimes when people squat, there's a tendency for their knees to come in. And these muscles here keep your knees Keep the, it's strong so that your knees don't, you're not knock kneed. Don't know why I put the band away because we need the band for this one. We're going to do a bicep curl. Bicep is this muscle on the front of your arm. So we're going to stand on the band. Stand on your band. The top of my head's cut off, isn't it? Never mind. Anchor your elbow into your waist. I, I, I anchor it just above my hip bone. Hold the band. Have it. Enough tension so that when your hand is there, which is where you want to really start off, you're having your, your arm is under tension. And all we're going to do is just close the arm like that. You don't lift. Only thing that moves is your forearm. <coughs> your forearm. You don't rock. So we go one, just down to there, nice and slow. Two, don't let gravity just pull your arm down. You control it. Three. Four, you put your hand on your bicep, five, you can feel it working, your other hand, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. And then we're going to do the other side. So standing on your band. Anchoring your elbow, get the tension right, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. Fabulous. All right, the next one we're going to do, you need, you need the chair for this. This is a practicing your balance. If you need to hold onto the chair, hold onto it. Um, don't fall over. The main bit of this exercise is not to fall over. The second bit is to try and improve your balance. And what we're going to do in a minute, we're going to uh, engage core. And I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to try it with hands on hips. But if you need to hold on, you know, just now and again for reassurance, we're going to bring your leg up so that your thigh, if you can, so your thigh is parallel to the floor. And then we're either going to lift it slightly like that or instead of lifting it, if you're very hardcore, straighten it. So it's more, that's more difficult with shoes on, because obviously the shoes weigh, are heavier than my bare feet. Right, so engaging core. Core, is, uh, as I'm sure you all know now, are these, the, the muscles around, like your corset, it's like a corset, but it goes deep inside as well, holds your backbone straight, but it also allows for movement. But it's, if you've ever, if, injured those muscles or overdone it a bit and you've got sore stomach muscles, you'll know how much you, you use them because every movement braces them. So exhale, pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can and pull up your pelvic floor and then relax slightly and hold it there. Hands on your hips and lift and lift and down. When you put your leg down, don't Put your weight on it. Try to just stabilize yourself. And then up. Oh, I'm going to fall there, see? Up. That's two. Up. Up. Three. Don't worry if you wibble and wobble. Up. Four. I wibble and wobble. Up. Up. Five. Now I'm going to straighten my leg for the next five. So I'm just mad. Ah. Oh. Six. Seven. Eight. When you're straightening your leg, you're just straightening it. So if you can only get your knee up to there. You're still just you're still straightening it, your thigh up to there. Nine. Ten. If you're doing the leg straightening, just keep your back straight. Still only your leg that moves. Try not to do that. I say that because I noticed there was a tendency in me to do that just now. Right. Oh. Next, other side, exhale, pull your navel into your back bone, release slightly, hands on hips, and we're going to go up, up. You'll find that one side is easier than the other. I don't know why I'm better at balancing on my right leg because I'm sort of right-sided almost. Up, two. Up, up, three, four, five. Woo! Six. Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to be straightening my leg, aren't I? Seven, eight, nine. My other leg, my right leg is feeling it. My static leg. Ten. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Right. Give your legs a bit of a wobble. Ah. 
right, what are we doing now? We're doing the upward row. Now, if you don't have band, a band, and even if you're doing this for the first time, it might be useful not to use the band because technique in this exercise is really important. So what we're trying to do is hold your hand, hold your thumb with your other hand so that your, your hands don't spring apart. That's the only reason you do that. And this exercise, you're lifting, but your elbows are coming up before. You keep that V. doesn't matter where you get your hands. If you can only get your hands to there, that's fine. What shouldn't happen is if you try to get your hands to your chin, that suddenly that happens or that happens. It's just a V and it's your elbows that come up. If you can get them to your chin, all well and good. If you can't, keep the technique rather than getting them to your chin. If you're using your band, you stand on your band. Uh, your feet are always hip width apart when you exercise, unless I say so. And then cross the band over. Cross the band like that. I'm going to come in. Hands together so you've got that V. And then you lift, so the V is still there. If you can, try and keep your forearm, your wrist, and your hand in one line. Try not to let your wrist bend. So we're going to do 10. So go. One, control the downward or the descent. Two. Three, keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well done. That's a tricky one to get the technique right <clears throat> because it's a slightly unnatural movement. That it's the it's the muscles you use if you're trying to pull a bin liner out of the out of the bin. Right. The next one we're going to do is for the abs. Now I'm going to keep going with this one for a little while because I know some people find it quite difficult. Other people say they prefer to do it on the floor. If you want to do it on the floor, you can. I'm not going to do use floor work because I know some people find it difficult, A, getting down and then B, getting up. So if um, I, that's why I'm sticking with the chair exercise. Um, but if you want to dump the chair and do it on the floor, that's absolutely fine. Um, so the chair is going to be sideways. You're going, well, you're going to sit in the chair sideways. So you're sitting like that, with the back here, either on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to turn the chair around now so as you can see where, where I'm sitting. So you're sitting, for, oh. you're sitting towards the front of the side, if you know what I mean. There's quite a lot of chair here behind you. Hold on to the chair if you want to. It's quite okay to hold on. And you're going to lean back until you can feel your stomach muscles engaging. Don't lean so far back that your back's arching and it's sore. Just lean back so that you don't need to lean back very far, in fact. Hold on to the chair if you want. You can hold on here if you want as well. Best if you don't, but if you need to, you can. And then we're just going to lift your knees. If you can only just get them slightly off the floor, absolutely fine. You might, oh, maybe we should do this. If you can't lift them both together, just, just do, ooh. actually, this is quite, uh, this is quite taxing, this. I wonder if we should do that one. Yeah, we'll try that one. So, holding on if you need to, hands out here if you don't need to, and we're going to go, we're just going to, Walk our legs. Four, five, six, seven, <clears throat> eight, nine, ten, and then sit up. 
We're going to have a slight rest and then we're going to do it again. I can really feel that on my stomach muscles, actually. I quite like that one. Like I say, make sure you feel secure. Holding on is fine. As long as you're not, well, even if you're, even if you're holding on to support yourself, it's fine. As you get stronger, you won't need to. Right, so leaning back again. Hold on to the chair if you need to. And it's one, two, three, nice and slow, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How was that? If you can give me feedback on that, oh, I can feel that. If you can give me feedback on that, I'd be uh, really grateful. Right, so we did our biceps earlier, this one. We're now going to do the triceps, which is this one in the back. The bingo wings one, but I hate that expression. So, the way you do this one is you have the band over one shoulder and the hand hand behind you this controls the tension this band this arm is like this right sort of back like that if you've got mobility shoulder mobility problems have your arm here at chest height and what we're going to do so i'm going to bend down so as you can see this what we're going to do is just straighten the arm up to the ceiling it's only again it's only the forearm that that moves. If you can't do that, do it down to the floor because you're using the same muscle. Again, it's just your forearm that moves well. Your upper arm moves a bit. So we're going to do 10. So hand either behind you here or at, your ch at chest height. Adjust the tension and we're going to go one, two, Three, four, you should feel it on the back of your arm. Five, six. When you're exercising, seven. This is why I tell you which muscle you're using. Eight, so that you can feel that muscle, concentrate on it. Nine, ten. And when you get towards ten, have the tension enough so that when you get... When you're about eight or nine, you're thinking, oh, I'll be glad when this is over. So that you're actually giving it a bit of welly. So however you're holding your hand, get the tension right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Got the tension tighter on this one. I can feel it. Eight. I'll be glad when we get to ten. Nine. Ten. Whoo! I felt that one. Right. Again, that one's a that one's a quite sort of technique-y one. Um, what you can do is try it without and just hold the muscle, hold the tricep, and when you do that, you can feel it moving. That's what you want. You don't want your shoulder to be moving. Right. We're now going to do 10 more squats. So either do your chair-based ones or your free squats. It's entirely up to you. If you can't manage 10, do what you can. 10 is something to aim for. Uh, so without any more preamble, we're going to get into the, into the squats. So, whoa, I'm falling backwards on my heels there. One. Two, three, you should still be able to see me on the screen. Four, don't look at the floor. Five, except to check that your feet are where they should be. Six, oh, seven, nice and slowly. Eight. Nine, 
10. I see people doing squats like this really fast. Whilst that's okay, gets your heart going a bit, it is more effective to do them nice and slowly. I'm panting here, nice and slowly, because that puts more uh, strain on your muscles. Right. Now it's my least favorite bit of the whole, the whole session, because I find these hard to do. I always say if you find an exercise hard, it means you need to do it more, not less. I wish I hadn't said that because now I'm hoist by my own petard, aren't I? Because I find this one difficult, so I obviously need to do it more. We're just going to have feet hip width apart. We're just going to bend to one side. And the bit I hate is putting my arm, actually it's not too bad today. If you put your arm over your head, keep your arm straight so that you're actually consciously keeping the, exercising that arm by keeping it straight. <sighs> Don't lean forward or back when you're bending. It's just to the side. So off we go. If you ex, sorry, if you exhale as you bend, it makes it slightly easier. So, oh. one, two, three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That wasn't too bad this week. Maybe I'm getting better at it. And then the other side. Oh. One. I always find this side slightly easier for some reason. Maybe I'm warmed up a bit. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Now, we're going to finish off with two exercises. First of all, we're going to do that little routine that we did, our little routine. We're going to do it slowly just to get it back in your brain as, as to what you're supposed to be doing. And then I'm going to play imaginary music in my head. I'm not allowed to play real music because of copyright laws. <clears throat> if you've got any zingy music that you want, put it on. But it might mean that you're doing it at a different tempo from us, which might be a bit off-putting. I don't know. So we're going to start by heel digs, side, back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. One last time, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Now I'm going to speed it up a bit and pretend that I'm listening to music. If you find yourself floundering around, don't worry about it. Just try and pick yourself up and keep up. Because this is, if you're new, because it takes a little while to get this into your brain. And it's really good brain training. Um, you're exercising, you're learning new stuff. It's really good. I just realized I didn't do the, uh, the shadow walking in the warm up, did I? Never mind, we'll do that next week. Uh, right, so I'm going to put the imaginary music on in my head and we're going to go. So, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, 
side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Ooh. One last time, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Well done. Oh, somebody's made a comment. I'm here but having a bit of trouble. What sort of trouble? Internet trouble? You can always watch it later, Doreen. Um, right. I'm going to finish now with something that is totally voluntary. You can do it or not as you see fit. What we're going to do is we're going to do three bouts of 20 seconds of high intensity training. You've heard of HIT. So if you haven't looked back at some of my previous talks, my little five minute talks, <clears throat> we're going to do 20 seconds of running on the spot like this. Don't hunch your shoulders like I was doing then. Keep your shoulders relaxed. You're only taking your feet just tiny little steps, but fast, as fast as you can. For 20 seconds, I'm going to count you. Uh, and then we have a bit of a rest, and then we do it twice more. HIT's work is very good. It gets your heart and lungs going. Um, it helps with visceral fat, you know, the fat that's in your internal organs. It's just really, really good. It's quite good fun as well. It makes you feel as if you've been doing something. As I say, it's totally voluntary. If you've got any problems or any worries about your heart, if you get any pain or anything, stop immediately. I'll leave it up to your good sense. Don't just keep, don't plow through pain or anything. No pain, no gain. There's a lot to answer for. It's rubbish. Right. So without further ado, are you ready? On your marks, set, go. We'll get the feet going fast, fast, fast. Don't take big steps, tiny little steps. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Stop. How was that? Obviously, you can't. Well, you can answer. You can type. Um, people tell. I, I've had feedback on the hit. We call it heartbeat. I, I, a previous group I did, I said, what are we going to call this? And somebody said heartbeat, because it makes your heart beat fast. Um, so I've had quite a lot of positive feedback about the heartbeat. I haven't had any negative feedback. But if you feel negatively about it, just don't do it. That's, that's fine. Nobody knows. Right. Have you recovered? We're going to... I've just realized why they put you to sleep. Because when I do the classes at 11... He's had his sleep, so he's waking up and he's ready to play. Whereas now, it's his, it's his sort of early morning sleep after he's been out for his run. Yay, result! You see him now, he's getting huge. Right, second session. On your marks, set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Stop. I'm sure I don't need to say stop. I'm sure you're more than ready to stop at twenty. Twenty seconds doesn't seem like a long time until you're doing high intensity interval training. It's all to do with Einstein and his relativity, isn't it? Time is relative. Get your breath back. And we'll do the last one. Give it some welly for the last one. You've only got 20 more seconds. Really, really give it. Yeah, when this is finished, don't zoom off and put the kettle on because we've got the stretching to do. 
You don't escape that easily. Right. Have you got your breath back? On your marks, set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. There we go. Well done. How was that? Just before we start the stretching and you get your breath back, if you've enjoyed the class and want to show me your appreciation, you can buy me, buy me a coffee. Uh, the link is on all the places that I advertised it. So U3A South Manchester, U3A Keeping in Touch, U3A Keep Fit, my Over 50 Fitness page. Uh, this is like when you're watching a YouTube channel and YouTube and somebody says, buy this food. Um, it's on Chalton Runners and Shetland Streakers. And also it's underneath in the comments underneath this video. Uh, if you scroll down, not here, but if you go into my YouTube channel and look at the videos, uh, there's a link there. And uh, there's, there's a link on Twitter as well. But you should have the link by now. So anyway, if, if you've enjoyed the class and you want to buy me a coffee, that would be very much appreciated. But there is no obligation at all. This is not one of these sites where you have to pay to join in. It's just if you would like to. And also, if you're doing this on my YouTube channel and you haven't subscribed, just click the subscribe thing. It doesn't um, mean that you're paying any money. It just, it's just a way of liking and if you click the notifications, then if I put something up on the channel, you'll get a notification. Um, and you could like you could like it as well. Loads of things for you to remember. So buy me a coffee, subscribe if you haven't, uh, notifications and like. Right, I'll stop talking now. So get your chair. We're going to do the stretches now. So get your chair. I'm just going here so as you can see what I'm doing. We're going to stretch the calf muscle. So if the front foot, the front leg is bent, back leg is straight but your heel is on the ground. If your leg is so far back, you can't put your heel on the ground, bring it forward a bit. Check that your feet are both pointing forward, both pointing in the same direction. And then you bend your front leg and lean forward and you, can, you should feel the stretch at the top of your calf, almost going into behind your knee. We're gonna hold it there for a few seconds. And then very gently bend your back knee. Your heel will come off the ground, but you should feel, if you push down on your toe, you should feel the stretch moving down into your Achilles tendon, into your lower calf. And then we're going to switch legs. Front leg bent, back leg straight. Check your feet are pointing in the same direction. And then gently bend your back knee just a tiny bit and your heel comes off the ground and you should feel the stretch going into your calf. Sorry, your Achilles, not your calf. Your lower calf and Achilles. And then stand up. The next one we're going to do is we're going to stretch the thigh muscles. Now, it's not a balancing exercise, this, so if you want to hold on, you can. There's two ways of doing this. If you can, grab your, your foot. Your, some people do the heel of their shoe. Uh, if you've got long trousers, some people do their trousers. Any way you can, have your knees together, standing up nice and straight, knees together. If you can't do that, then do this. This is dynamic stretching, but it's stretching the muscle. If you want to, put your hands behind you, see if you can kick your hands. No obligation to do that. I'm going to do static stretching. So we're going, us the static stretchers are going to just stand like this for a few minutes, a few seconds. The dynamic stretchers keep moving your leg, list legs, plural. I'm assuming you both, you, you have two legs. We're going to hold that just for a few more seconds. And then we're going to, static stretches are going to switch legs. Dynamic stretches are going to keep doing that.
Oops, falling over there because I wasn't paying attention. You can practice your balance if you want. It's always good to practice your balance. I noticed yesterday when I was, I was down by the, the, the River Mersey and there were some rocks and I was walking on them. And my balance, I felt a bit precarious. I thought, ooh, I don't want to take a header into the Mersey. Right, stop that. Stop what you're doing. Next one, we're going to do the hamstrings, the big muscles at the back of your thigh. So sitting on the edge of your chair. There's a lot of edge of chair sitting in this, isn't there? Sitting up nice and straight. One leg goes forward with your toe pulled back, your heel on the ground, legs straight. Sitting up nice and straight. Lean forward from the hips, not from the waist. So you're not hunching forward like that. You're leaning, your whole torso is going forward. And remember, this is your stretch. You do what is challenging for you. It should be challenging, but not painful. If it's painful, slacken it off. You're doing too much. Don't bounce. I see people bouncing sometimes. Don't bounce. Just hold it. Because if you're bouncing, you risk snapping something, which is painful. Believe me, I've done it. And then sitting up and repeating on the other side. So sitting up nice and straight, leaning forward from the hips, not from the waist. Okay, right, standing up, hands out, uh, arms up, palms facing forward, at shoulder height, bring your hands round as if you're hugging a tree, so your arms are round, not straight, but hugging a tree, dip your head, and this opens up the big muscles at the top of your back, your shoulder muscles, I like this, I, I quite like doing this stretch. It's sort of separating your shoulder blades. And then put your hands behind your back. Interlock your fingers if you can. If you can't, just try and get your elbows together. Obviously, you can't get your elbows together <clears throat> unless there's something a bit peculiar about you. If your hands are interlocked, if your fingers are interlocked, you raise your arms up like that just to get that stretch across your chest. It's important that we keep the muscles and the chest stretched, else you end up with that forward dowager's hump thing. We don't want that, do we? Oh, no, no. Okay. Final one of this, of, well, final one of the arms. Hand up and down your back like that. This is for your triceps. If you can't do this if you've got shoulder mobility problems just leave this one out but your hand is there and then you're pulling your hand pulling your <clears throat> this bit your upper arm back and it's to stretch here this one people find difficult sometimes it's a technique one it took me quite a long time before I actually felt any benefit from it I was like well, what's happening I'm not not feeling any stretch so just persevere and hopefully you will and then up, and the next one, <clears throat> back. Okay. And finally, <clears throat> sitting in the chair. You don't need to be sitting at the edge of your seat this time, but don't use the back to relax. Use your own muscles to support you. Uh, we're just going to dip your head, put your hand on your crown, but don't push. Just let the weight of your hand push your head down a bit. Don't actively push.
and then look up and then turn your head only your head not your shoulders turn your head to the left note where your chin is in relation to your shoulder and then we're going to put your if you're turning your head to the left put your right hand on the right hand side of your face or by your chin and then try and turn your head back to the center but resist with your hand so you are you're creating tension in your neck so keep that tension going and then relax totally and you should be able to keep your head turned slightly more you should be able to move it slightly more even if it's only a fraction of a millimeter it's just to increase the flexibility of your neck hold your head there and then bring your head back to the center nice and all these movements are gentle turn your head to the right note where your chin is in relation to your or how far around you can see put your left hand on your left hand side of your face try and turn your head back to the center resist with your hand get that fight going on that tension in your neck and then relax and see if you can turn your head just slightly more Keep your head turned. I've noticed that sometimes people do this. They turn the head back to the center immediately. Don't do that. Keep it turned a bit. And now bring it back slowly back to the center. And that's it for today, folks. Thank you very much. I shall see you next Wednesday. Any feedback is gratefully received because unless I know how the exercises are affecting you, whether they're easy, difficult, what have you, then it's difficult for me to plan properly because I want to I'm doing the exercises for you really so I want to know that, I, that you're benefiting from them okay bye